Hello and welcome to our special broadcast. I'm Sean Ray. Thank you for joining me as we learn together about one of the most celebrated icons in the music industry today. Before I introduce him, let's take a moment and enjoy a segment of his exciting career. Arranged by Charles Colello. One of pop music's greatest arrangers, Charles Colello. With over 100 chart hits, Charles Colello is one of those unsung heroes. My eyes are dark. This young lady who wrote this song was Laura Nero. She was one of the females in the 60s that changed the face of pop music. We had a band that was in Newark, New Jersey, playing the local clubs. And one day, who walks into the club? Frankie Valley. So he walks in, he hears the band, and he hears the arrangements. And he says to uh, one, of the, one of the guys, who wrote those arrangements? So he pointed to me, and I met Frankie. And the rest is history. <laughs> From a chance meeting with Frankie Valley almost 50 years ago, award-winning arranger producer Charles Colello has produced hits for many great artists. When I made a record, if it killed me, if it put me away when I finished the record, if I knew it appealed to me, well, I knew it was going to touch somebody else's heart. How many of you know this? <laughs> Beethoven. Everybody knows it's Beethoven. This is Colello. <laughs> a real good friend and a great, great singer. Please put your hands together and join with me in helping Juice Newton grace this stage. arranged and produced material for Frank Sinatra, Barbara Streisand, Frankie Valli, Neil Diamond, Barry Manilow, and Paul Anker.
Let's welcome my guest and friend, who is recognized as perhaps the greatest musical arranger of our time. He has over 100 recordings that have appeared on the Billboard music charts, 38 of which have gone on to become top 10 hits more than any other arranger in history. I'm talking about an individual whose music has been nominated over 17 times for a Grammy Award, the legendary Mr. Charles Colello. Thank you very much for that great introduction. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. I was so listening much. to my heritage there. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. You have arranged and produced some of the biggest hits for some of the greatest entertainers of the 20th and now the 21st century. We've just enjoyed watching your video segment, Wow, with an introduction from the chairman of the board himself, Frank Sinatra. Who are some of the other legends you've worked with, and how about a little snippet into how they reacted to your arrangements, making hits for them? That's an interesting question. Well, we'll start with the artists first. Um, I did all the S's, I think. Uh, Streisand, Sinatra, Springsteen, uh, Engelbert Humperdinck, Neil Diamond, uh, The Four Seasons, Ray Charles, uh, tons of people. It's hard to remember all the people. Uh, how they responded to the arrangements, well, sometimes I did a good job and they called me back, and sometimes I didn't do such a good job and they didn't call me back. I doubt that. <laughs> You're being humble. Go ahead. But, but usually, uh, usually if, we, if we had success, uh, that was the criteria of how they, you know, how it really worked, and they would call you back. So, I, I mean, it's, uh, most times they responded favorably. I guess they called you back a lot of times, as we see on all the nominations you've gotten over the years, Charles. Yeah, that, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> now, Charles, in the year 2000, you were honored for all your talents and artistic contributions to the music industry with an induction into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame as one of the Four Seasons. Now, what was that experience like? The idea was really a good idea to give recognition to the members of these vocal groups. Uh, and the four seasons were inducted into the, four, the Hall of Fame, and there were the four, four members plus myself. Wow. And I think that uh, uh, although the original four, four seasons were inducted into the, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right. when it came to the Vocal Group Hall of Fame, because I was a four season in 1965, right. then I was actually uh, one of the people that they, that they inducted. But as far as a singer is concerned, that's not my real talent. No, I you know, so I sort of took that and I said, okay, you know. Amazing. Well, you certainly deserve it for all the work that you've done with them and for them and, and since then. Uh, Charles, other than myself, of all the stars you've collaborated with, uh, which artists have you enjoyed working with the most? Well, that's an interesting question because each of the artists have different personalities. But well, you weren't chopped liver either. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, when you conduct orchestras, Charles, what do you find the most rewarding about doing that? I know Re you once told me that you really like conducting orchestras. Receiving the check at the end of <laughs> when it's all over. <laughs> no, ac actually, the thrill of getting in front of an orchestra for an arranger is, and I've, I've often thought about this, was uh, I sit in my house and I write arrangements. I sit in a room. Uh, sometimes with the earphones on, sometimes sitting at a piano, sometimes you're sitting at a desk. Right. And after you create this music right. and you go into the studio and stand in front of the greatest musicians in the world yeah. or the greatest musicians in that location, for example, California, New York, London, uh, Japan, when you stand in front of those musicians and you bring your hands down yeah. and you hear that music, the thrill never, never, never has escaped me. It's, it's still, I get the same feeling today after writing for almost, you know, 50 years. I still get the same thrill. I can't wait to, for the downbeat. And we've done this, Charles. I've loved watching you get really excited about doing that. And now what are the...